Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you like to talk about nostalgic video games or video games that come back to life, definitely consider subscribing. I like to talk about all that stuff. In today's subject, we're going to talk about the problem with Shenmue on the Dreamcast. Now, I've been a long-time Shenmue fan. The Dreamcast is one of my favorite consoles of all time. And Shenmue is one of my favorite franchises of all time. And I love playing the game, and I've done a ton of videos on Shenmue on this channel, of course. So, but the original Shenmue had something exciting, but at the same time introduced a problem inadvertently when it was released. So the first Shenmue, which is an amazing open world action adventure game with RPG elements as well, it, it kind of revolutionized open world, which existed before Shenmue did, but Shenmue did it to a finer detailed point on the Sega Dreamcast and no one ever has been able to replicate it since nor has it been done before that. So Shenmue had one of the most exciting features that isn't talked about too much but it has been mentioned and that exciting feature is that Shenmue you you learn to fight you learn different moves you gain different objects in the game and this game is basically a revenge quest but it's also preparing you to face the final boss once you eventually find them and basically you have to prepare lift work up your stat and do whatever you can to pretty much get that and then get all the items that you possibly can get all the money you possibly can but then the game ends on a cliffhanger but with that cliffhanger you had worked all these moves, you got all these objects to just kind of leave you in the middle of the story. But on the Sega Dreamcast, you were almost promised and expecting that the story would continue on on the Sega Dreamcast. So all of your stats, everything that you did to build yourself up would be pretty much accessible on the sequel. Well, unfortunately, in the U.S., we didn't get the sequel on the Dreamcast. We actually got it on the Xbox, and you couldn't bring your saves over from the Dreamcast. So it's almost like all that work that you did in training was lost. But was it? It wasn't for me. Now I'm going to take you back. When Shenmue 2 was basically announced, and I thought that I'd never get to play it on the Dreamcast, it would only be available on the Xbox, I did know that overseas they were going to port the game. So the Japanese were going to get it on the Dreamcast. So was the PAL market, but not the North American market. And I just kind of learned to accept that until one day I went to a local video game store that imported games all the time, and they imported the PAL version of Shenmue 2. So this was exciting, but the one thing, when I popped it in my Dreamcast, I did have a boot disk for it, so I knew that I'd be able to load the game just fine. What I found was that the save data that, that I had for the end game of Shenmue did not let me boot into Shenmue 2 with that save data. Basically, it's like I couldn't transfer it over because the file types were saved differently. It was a frustration, but it was one that I knew I could conquer. And back then, I did conquer it. And I'm going to walk you through what I did, and we'll get to it right away, basically. So, oh, and you were able to do it back then when I, and how I did this trick. But then you weren't able to do that again until the re-release of Shenmue 1 and 2 in 2018. But at that point, I had already done it in North America. And I'll show you how, actually. This is how I did it. Okay, so first things first, you've got to have a copy of Shenmue and an original Dreamcast. Now, the point of this, of course, you could use emulators or play Shenmue 1 and 2 in the 2018 release. But the reason I think that this is important, and in particular, I mostly enjoy it, and playing Shenmue and other Dreamcast games on the original console is the fact that the VMU itself is a beautiful device and the Dreamcast itself along with this controller is so useful. Different games use the controller differently. So first thing you want to check for is the fact that you've got a save of Shenmue. So here we've got a save of Shenmue. I don't have the game complete so I'm actually going to move over a file. I don't have a Shenmue file game saved so what I'm going to do is actually transfer a file from the computer to the actual VMU unit via a little port that I've got here. And it's, a, it's an SD adapter that's actually in the back of my Dreamcast. 
I don't know if I can see it, show it clearly, but it's right over there. So this little port right here is a port that allows me to connect SD cards to the Dreamcast. And actually you can play ROMs off of it, but it's really slow, I wouldn't recommend it. But what I use this for is basically transferring saves from the PC to the Dreamcast. And why that's gonna be relevant today is because, A, I need to transfer the save to the Dreamcast, one that has the file complete because I didn't have one currently saved onto my Dreamcast with a file complete. But in order to do that, First, I got to download the save from the internet. Now, I'll leave, I'll leave a link to where I downloaded the save from the internet onto my computer. But once I have it on the computer, I'm going to need to get it onto my Dreamcast. And how am I going to do that? Well, simple. I'm going to take this SD card out. SD card that's pretty much formatted with this software. And I'll leave a link to this software that's, that's pretty much for something called Dream Shell. A Dream Shell is basically an operating system for the Dreamcast that gets booted off of that little SD card adapter. So, I'm going to show you what that's like. Okay, so in my actual PC, I've got memory card with basically the software that I would need. But in this VMU case, I've got a couple of VMU files, one, two, four, and five. Now I've got a Dreamcast emulator called Demol, which creates memory saves in like these bin files. Now what I've got in this bin file right here is a copy of Shenmue pretty much at the end of the game. So I'm going to copy this VMS00.bin file into this VMU saves and just paste it. Now I can then rename this file to VMU dump zero zero let's call it zero zero three and then I'm just gonna change the basically the, the suffix to dot VMD and this suffix it's gonna at, tell me it's a file name extension do I really want to change it I'm gonna say yes because I basically won't have a problem getting it to the run on the Dreamcast and on the software just by renaming it. So it's just VMU dump 003. I still didn't move my file, but I was able to transfer the file that I downloaded from the internet using this VMS browser and then attaching it to this. And now we're going to implant it in the Dreamcast. So I'm going to take the SD card, put it back in the Dreamcast on this little adapter that goes in the back of the port. Now, someone who's looked at this is Adam Korlick has actually done a video on how these things work. And you don't need to do all of this to convert the files. I'm just doing it because I needed to download it. So I'm going to use this Dream Shell. I'm going to open up the Dreamcast, pop in Dream Shell, close it up. And now that I've got Dream Shell started, I'm recording here, and you can see Dream Shell is just kind of like uh, reading off the SD card. And this is perfect because when you read off the SD card, I could just basically get it. And what I tend to do, I've got Retro Dream on it as well on, on the SD card, but I would actually work with Dream Shell because Dream Shell for me is in particular, for this type of interface, for memory card interface, I prefer it. It seems to work better off for me. Dream Shell, I'm going to click on VMU Manager now. In VMU Manager, I'm going to go to the first memory card because that's where I have the save. Now I've got all of these in my VMU, all these Code Veronica, Sonic 2, Sonic saves. And I'm going to just click on here and I wanted to see what the VMU dump is. But if I do the VMU dump, all of these files are going to get overwritten, which is fine. I, I, I have all of these saves backed up anyway, so it's going to re overwrite my entire VMU on VMU1 to only have that Shenmue data. But that's what we were looking to do in this case anyway. So once it's, once it's done over here, you're going to see just Shenmue1 on the left which is cool. And now we're just going to get out of here because now we got Shenmue 1 and now we can pretty much turn this off. Okay, now I've got the Shenmue 1 complete file. So now we're at a situation where like we just finished Shenmue 1. Now, 
this is where I, I'd imagine the rest of you guys were. You just finished Shenmue 1 on the Dreamcast. You want to continue it on your Shenmue 2 PAL version, or maybe even Japanese version. But in the, this case, uh, I've got it with the PAL version. So I've got the PAL version here, but I want to be able to play it. Now, I'll leave a link to this below, but it's this Shenmue converter that I've got right here save file converter that I'm going to put in my Dreamcast right now and this runs right off the Dreamcast so you don't really don't need a PC at all besides um, burning this disc to be able to play and continue your file in particular so you see here DC Evolution this is just software that is for the Dreamcast that is only for converting the file so here we see Shenmue 1 and we're going to put it in the same memory card, which is A1. And this Shenmue 1 complete file, or the Shenmue 1 file, is going to get converted into a European version. It's now saved Shenmue 1 as a European file. Now we're going to exit out of this software. So now we've got the European version loaded. So now what we're going to do is boot Shenmue 2. Pop in Shenmue 2 which is great we're playing the pal version of shenmue 2 and it's playing right here if all goes well what we'll expect to see on this dreamcast is the shenmue 2 loading off of the shenmue 1 file that we just had off of the previous system. now uh, on the us version everything will be the same we're going to go into new game and then it's saying start shenmue 2 from a clear disk now this is the and here it is it read the file and it knows that the cleared file is right there. What we had because the file successfully converted in the Dreamcast. So we're going to load the converted file. Yes. And it actually works. Now, if all goes well, we're going to see all the items in Rio's inventory. So we'll pick up right when that starts. So here we are, I just started Shenmue 2, and all of our stats should be here when it comes to, first of all, our Hong Kong dollars actually switched from what it was in Japan. So it kind of converts, so money you might not see the same, but check out this collection. It's exactly the same as what we had in Shenmue 1. I thought I didn't see like the forklift truck, but the forklift truck that we saw before, here it is. So we got all of our collections that we were able to get from the first one into the second one. And it's pretty amazing that you that it carried over from the second one, from the first one to the second one. Hang on in Space Harrier. We had those. And if you had it, you can still have it in this Sega Saturn version, which is pretty interesting. Your move scrolls also carried over. So all of these moves that you had in the, in the first one are in the second one. If you worked hard and if you still have your Dreamcast save file that you were never able to transfer over, honestly, this is your answer. You're able to transfer it over onto your Dreamcast with this one easy to use app. And it's pretty awesome. And I used it back in the day. So yes, this is nothing new to me. This was available and I had the ability because it, you don't, don't have to transfer it from your computer. I just did it now because I didn't have the save file complete. But you don't have to transfer it from your computer. You can just, you'll have access to it immediately if you just download the CD. Boot it up on your legacy Dreamcast, the first Dreamcast that released before November 2000 that let you uh, load CDs. And, and it honestly works just like it worked for me here. So it's awesome. And another awesome thing that it comes to when it comes to playing the original Shenmue is the fact that playing it on the Dreamcast, you get the Shenmue 2 icon right on your controller. And that pretty much is appreciated because you don't get that on any modern console at all. No controller ever <laughs> lets you actually see like the logo as you play, which is pretty awesome. So there you go. That's how I was able to get Shenmue 1 game to continue on Shenmue 2 on the Dreamcast, which was pretty cool. It was pretty fun kind of setting this up and 
trying to get this all classic situation get back again. Now, is this something that I would do modern day? I would do it because the Dreamcast controller in itself, to me, is a revolutionary controller that still has not been duplicated. The closest was the Wii U controller, which actually had the screen, but really didn't implement it as well as the Dreamcast did in my personal opinion because for such a small green screen it gave you so much information so that's why i love playing the dreamcast to this day one of the many reasons and of course the original shenmue series on the original consoles and see how graphically impressive they were back when they were released and be re-released so later in the game and still be games that were pretty much revolutionary at the time but when they were re-released it's also brought in new fans which is awesome and i'm a huge fan as always but let me know what you guys think of this video did it help you are you a dreamcast player that always wondered how to do this well there's your answer but let me know in the comments down below what else you'd like to see and as always you can make my day if you subscribe today this is magnus and i'm out Special thanks to Adam Korlick in particular with all his videos when it comes to not only Dreamcast, but everything that he's always experimented with when it comes to consoles. He's a great guy. Check out my videos over here, too. Anyway, <laughs> see you later.